Hi everyone, we're about to get started. Guest um, who's going to be Abby from Circle. So give us just a moment and bear with us. I know everyone is anxiously looking at the news and refreshing screens. Let us know in the chat where you are actually tuning in from. We'd love you are. And if you voted, hopefully you did, how you voted whether it was by mail or in person. We'll get set up here. And where are you guys coming in from? All right, hopefully. Oh, Hawaii. Wow, awesome. Texas voted in person. Love it. Missouri, New York. Hello, California. I love these stories. Okay, I think we're having a little bit of difficulty. Let's see if we can early voted. Oh, I love that Hollywood Bowl. Dropbox location, that's what I did. Did anyone else have a 24 hour Dropbox? AZ, yeah, very cool. All right, let's try this again. Here we go. We're going to be talking about uh, youth turnout and what we are able to actually find out right now about the youth vote and what insights we have at least so far. So bear with us while we bring Abby on. Oh, well, I'm so sorry to hear about your son, Jude. Thoughts are with you. Oh, U.S. citizen from South Africa. That is actually how I learned to appreciate our democracy was uh, was a trip to South Africa to end, to learn about the end of apartheid. All right, we might be having some technical difficulties right now. Let's see what we can do here. I love the fact that we have some volunteers on here. Okay, we may have to try this again, folks. Looks like they're having some trouble joining. Let me see what we can do here, bear with us. Mm -mm -mm. Are you in Philly, I'm wondering? Is anyone else watching the ballot counting? All right, I think. Okay, let us see. I'm going to close out here, but stay tuned because I am going to see if we can get Abby back on here. Um, I'm wondering <clears throat> if she is going to be able, let's try and reinvite her. Looks like she's still trying to connect. If you have any questions, please put your questions in the comments. There we go. Finally! Made it. Sorry. No, all good. Uh, it's lovely to see your face because we have been working like crazy for months and I haven't gotten to see you. This is very true and vice versa. Thanks for having us on here today. Well, fantastic. Um, Abby, can you share a little bit about uh, very briefly who, what Circle is and what you guys do and, and basically how you help all the rest of us in this space know about young people and young people's civic engagement. Well, thanks for saying that. We certainly try. Circles are a national research center focused on young people's civic and political engagement and especially on closing systemic 
um, inequities in young people's ability to have voice on issues that they care about. We were founded in 2001 and have been doing this for almost 20 years now. And we work in a kind of unique way. We're not an average academic research center because our audience is groups like Rock the Vote and young people on the ground trying to provide research on what can really shift systems so that young people can be more included, more heard, and more active in their communities. So I uh, love the graphs that you all put together to help explain a lot of the research because not a lot of us like to look at the numbers in the databases, but we do love the graphs and what they tell us, um, which you guys have at your website, which is? Circle.tufts.edu. Cool. Um, so let's get to it. I know that we don't know a lot, right? We know some stuff, but some stuff is still very much coming out. And we have a lot of um, counts that still need to, ballots that still need to be counted. We have a lot of analysis to do. But what do we actually know about you? Mm -hmm. We know young people were phenomenally engaged in the 2020 election cycle. We know that young people, you know, really made their voices heard, especially young people of color all over the country. And when we look at early turnout estimates, we see that almost half of young people voted and we might see that number increase as more ballots are counted. So I would say this is a pretty significant year for youth and engagement in an election cycle. Even earlier this year, we saw huge numbers, huge percentages of young people volunteering for campaigns, giving money to campaigns, registering other young people to vote. So I think we saw the impact of young people on this election starting months ago. Yeah. Well, I was going to say one thing I always talk about, too, that people don't realize is how uniquely impacted young people were this year. And the unique one, the unique challenges they always face in participating in an election as new voters. Um, but also this year in particular, because with COVID and not knowing right. college and that sort of thing and where to register, uh, that obviously presented a lot of problems. So can you talk a little bit about um, when we look at turnout among young people, like what are the other factors that we have to um, think about that other demographics don't necessarily have to? Oh, there's so many. So, I mean, you, you know, hit the nail on the head when talking about young people are new to the election system. And so one of the things that we think needs to be done that's a challenge is that young people need to know about how voting and elections work even before they reach 18, um, which is why pre-registration can be so critical in states where it's necessary. Um, but some of the other challenges that young people face, even young people who are registered to vote, right, and have navigated that process, and that process isn't totally clear for everyone, um, but even young people who have registered to vote see issues with not seeing or having a polling location close to them, not fully understanding um, exactly how, when, and where to vote. And for a lot of young people, it can be an issue of transportation to and from a polling location, right? Or where you can this year drop off your absentee ballot. And so with the global pandemic that we have going on, there's just more challenges layered onto that, um, you know, with respect to knowing about online voter registration, right? Like, even though lots and lots of young people know about it and use it, not everyone does. Um, and then you layer on to that, you know, challenges with these things being mostly digital this year. Um, even though there's so much opportunity to reach so many more young people um, online, there's still young people who may not have, you know, regular access to broadband um, when they're not going to school or not have access to a community center or something. So those are some of the things that we see during a regular cycle and how that was really amped up this year. So the fact that young people, you know, really held their ground and held their share of the vo of voters, right, because turnout was up amongst everyone, really means that young people were, were here for it this year, right, really standing up for their own future and what they believe in. Yeah. Do we, I know at Rock the Vote, we saw certainly you know, the coronavirus obviously derailed a lot of the momentum we usually have in an election cycle. But then in June with uh, 
the start of Black Lives Matter protests in response to George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and others, we started to see huge engagement, like just spiking engagement for voter registrations, for following on social media, for folks to really, um, really start figuring out what they can do to create change immediately. Mm -hmm also taking that into this November election. Um, and I don't know if you have any, you briefly touched on it, but I'm also wondering if you see any parallels uh, to 2018, um, certainly with the Park for Our Lives and the energy around, um, obviously in 2018, it was around gun violence reform and this year, it's very much focused on racial injustice and um, how that, and other issues through that lens. There's so many parallels to 2018, I think. I mean, the first, the first parallel is that there's, you know, sometimes media ask questions about like, oh, are young people choosing protest over voting? But we've, we, we haven't seen that be the case. And actually, you know, you're, you're talking about gun violence prevention movement in 2018. You know, we saw the young people who were engaged in that be more likely to cast ballots in 2018 and more likely to be paying attention to the election. Um, and so it's not surprising that when young people started taking to the streets um, and there were uprisings around racial justice in 2020, that that also translated to youth voter registration as well. Um, and then, you know, I think that one of the things that's also a thread between all of this is youth leadership, you know, like, this is all being done by young people, right? I mean, there's elections administrators that do some outreach to youth and, um, but you know, it's youth organizations, right? And the young leaders on the ground as well, who are just hustling to make all of this happen in 2018 and, you know, in contributing to what we're seeing in 2020 as well. So I think those are some of the threads that we're seeing continue from 2018 to 2020. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, I was gonna say, Looking back, I know we're still, you guys are still doing a lot of analysis on the numbers, especially numbers are still coming in. Yep. Is there any comparison we can do to 2016? Obviously, 2018 is a midterm election, so it's very different for young people. Um, so 2016 is the best, I think, the best comparison. Um, uh, can we tell anything compared to 2016 right now? A really little bit. <laughs> so thank you for acknowledging the, the, the hard numbers situation right now. So if we look at, you know, where national turnout was sort of at this, like, at this point in 2016, we would have seen that nationally young people had turned out at about 42 or 44 percent. Um, and when we did our, our analysis, you know, as of the votes counted this morning, we saw that young people in battleground, 11 battleground states were at a place where their turnout was at least 47 to 49%, roughly, then that's an estimate. And we think that that has like a very strong potential to go up, you know, to or above 50%. So in those battleground states where we have, you know, a little bit more information since more ballots are being, have been counted there, um, we have, that analysis that youth turnout is above where it was nationally um, at this moment in, in 2016. So just another indicator of how young people have been engaged in 2020. Yeah, okay. Um, is there, I'm trying to think if there's anything that we can look for, are there any indicators we should look for as you guys continue to roll out analysis, like as you continue to do analysis that we should be paying attention to um, that might be interesting comparisons or thing trends to look at? Well, one of the things that we're looking at across the country is, you know, the estimated number of youth votes cast compared to margin of victory in a state, you know, for mm -hmm. um, the Senate races as well as the presidential race. Because one of the things that we saw in 2016 was that young people's votes cast far, far, far exceeded the margin of victory. You know, and, you know, we could do lots of fancy math and show, you know, how it how it specifically impacted the margin of victory. But given how many folks think that young people just don't turn out at all, I like to talk about those numbers because hundreds of thousands of youth turn out to vote in every single election. Millions turned out to vote in 
the 2020 election. And when you compare it to, you know, these small margins of victory, you can see young people's impact really clearly. Yeah. Um, so looking at as states continue to, uh, I guess, get their initial counts out and you guys do those analysis, um, paying attention to what those margins of victory are. And then what are the things that you have, that you guys have all seen? I know we at Rock the Vote work on a lot of these, but you've done some amazing analyses even after 2018 on the importance of social media and reaching young people, but also the different components that you guys have, have researched that you know actually result in increased participation. Um, can you talk and highlight a few of those? That'd be helpful. Yeah, for sure. We literally sent a survey out into the field today to try to understand, you know, how were young people engaged in October, you know, right before the with the election? Was it hard to vote, you know, or was it pretty easy? We'll, we'll be we'll be seeing things like that. We're also asking things, you know, about people who reached out to you, people who talked to you about the election, where we were getting information about the election. Um, really concrete information about how, when, and where to cast ballots. And that's really important because, I mean, the research about youth election participation over the past, you know, 20 years has really shown that when young people are asked and have the concrete information, um, then they turn out and respond, right? And so we have this huge problem of young people not being asked, not being included, um, not seeing things as like truly accessible. Um, and so that's one of the things that we're really going to be looking at. Who was actually talking to young people? Who was talking to young people who hadn't voted before? Because that's, that's one of the other things that we see, right? Campaigns and parties are reaching out to folks who, vote, who have voted before because they have a track record of voting and they you know, think that they'll vote with them. But you know, we really need to pay attention to the 18, 19, 20 year olds who are new to the system as you, you know, started this conversation with. And we can do that by using lots of different channels including, you know, peer-to-peer -peer outreach, including digital organizing, um, because those things are all needed. It's not an either or. We need all of the above to reach a much wider diversity of young people. Yeah. Um, is there anything else before we wrap up? I'm just seeing if we have any questions out here. I know we are still early, so we might invite you back next week as we <laughs> get more information. Mm -hmm out of this. Um, but is there anything else that you want to share before um, that, you know, in this moment, uh, hold on, we have a question right here. What does it mean if it sa still says received on my vote tracker and not yet accepted? Oh, that is a great question. Um, so I don't know if you used, I can let you answer it, Abby, but I'm also happy to answer it. Um, Go for it. <laughs> um, basically, it means that it's been received. It depends on the state and how they're reporting it um, on whether or not it's still being processed. So one of the reasons that we have such delays in uh, this year's um, counts is because there's a significant increase, obviously, of uh, absentee voting or mail-in voting. And so as a result, also com com um, combined with the fact that several states were not able to even start processing those ballots until yesterday. In fact, some of them actually couldn't do it until polls closed late last night. So some of these states are still very much processing ballots. So it may have been that they received it and they haven't yet counted it. Um, but to be sure, uh, if you go to rockthevote.org and use the tool that we have on the homepage right now, um, you can actually get your local election officials uh, website, email and phone number so you can proactively call them and make sure that your ballot is actually counted or if it's still being processed. Um, and I would highly encourage you to email because phone lines are a little jammed right now. Um, and that way you also have a record of your outreach. Um, any other questions that are coming up? Can you vote for Swi from Switzerland? <laughs> um, <laughs> if you are, I was gonna say, if you're an overseas voter, yes, there is an organization that actually is designed specially for you if you're a US citizen um, and eligible to vote. Um, you can actually go to overseasvote.org, uh, I believe it is. Um, and they are specifically run for um, US citizens who want to vote from abroad. 
Um, where do you all see the need for you civic orgs like ours that we are after the election um, and after the election season? You want to talk a little bit about that, Abby? Does it have to be a choice? Can we just say everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, the, I love the premise of the question, though, because the, the premise of the question assumes that local youth organizations are important. And they absolutely are. Youth organizations are important, national, regional, local, because they provide a political home for young people. They provide an opportunity for young people to, you know, try out new things, have a voice, talk to, hear what other young people have to say. And that is critically important to, sorry about my dog, critically important to, you know, young people really having the role and the voice in all of our communities that we absolutely need. Yeah, I think... That's absolutely right. And I think there are things that we really need to do in terms of policy changes. I know that we'll be working on um, policy changes, but also technology changes and a whole slew of different reforms that we can be making and need to make in order to uh, fix our democracy so that it works better for the people, but especially for young people who know are marginalized in this process. Um, so things like pre-registration, as you mentioned, right? States mm -hmm. have that, which we know helps increase uh, participation among young people or the fact um, of no excuse absentee voting, right? Which mm -hmm. we uh, uh, play a huge role in, in this election, but we know that some states uh, predominantly run their elections by mail and have some of the highest voter turnout and voter turnout among young people. So there's a lot that we need to get to work um doing in in january i would say once state legislature <laughs> back um and we have uh, uh we have a little more certainty into what our federal government looks like but um yeah obviously it's very soon after but how can we be proactive helpful between now and then ooh 2022 midterm elections oh i love that question um there's a lot one mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like Follow up with Rock the Vote. Um, but yeah, fo make sure that you are on uh, following us on social media, which you clearly are. Um, but also sign up with us because we will be doing a lot of um, activations between now and 2022. But just noting that there are so many elections between uh, between today or yesterday, Tuesday, and, um, and the midterm election in 22. We have several... Uh, major municipal elections and arguably state and local elections are what impact your day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. and the issues that uh, really young people care about. So things like police brutality, criminal justice reform, minimum wage, all those issues are a lot of times decided at the local level and the turnout in local elections because we don't hear about them, right? Um, tends to be in like the teens and sometimes it's below 10. Mm -hmm. So find out, I'd encourage you find out when your local election, your next local election is and start preparing there. Um, but also we have to make sure that we're holding the leaders that we elected in this election accountable, right? To the issues that we care about um, and pushing for democracy reform. So pushing for uh, policies that promote democracy. I don't know, Abby, if you have anything else to, to mention. And keep talking to your friends about the issues, right? I mean, that's one of the biggest things that we can all do to keep people thinking that their voice matters, right? And to keep keep uh, the conversation about going about what we want for our communities and for our country going forward. And that discussion really can have an influence on whether or not someone acts. You know, having a conversation about what you're doing may give uh, one of your friends an idea of what they could do and they might not know that there was that opportunity out there and that's one of the biggest barriers that we see um, in the data is young people not knowing about opportunities um, so sharing that info and sharing what you're doing either online or you know um, through you know digital platforms can be a, can go a huge way to really providing more access to other young people. Yeah, that's absolutely true. The way I think about it a lot of times is I talk about how we're the bosses in our democracy and we hire and we our elections are hiring and firing, but there's so much work to do in between. <laughs> and we need to make sure that right our employees, our government officials that we've elected are 
um, doing what we want them to do and um, how important that is. And uh, this can't, you know, democracy is a process. It's not an end goal. We have to, it is a living, breathing thing that we always have to um, make sure we're involved in. So um, I think that is it on the questions. I don't think I um, missed anything else. All right. Um, Abby, I want to thank you for all your work uh, thank you. supporting young people, but also supporting organizations like Rock the Vote and doing this amazing research and, and being proactive. To give you guys some idea, Abby's, I think since last night, emailed me four or five times with updates of <laughs> what we know about young people. So there is a specific question about Arizona. Do you want to answer that? What we know about young people in Arizona? I can try, yeah. Not to put you on the spot. Yeah. So what happened with young people in Arizona? Well, um, first, we know absolutely that young people in Arizona, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to specifically talk about young Latinx people in Arizona, because the strength of support for um, former Vice President Biden among young, young Latinx folks in the state was stronger than other youth in the state. And so given the fact that former Vice President Biden won Arizona, according to some who are calling it, um, I gotta believe that again, we're seeing the power of the Latino community and of young people um, on that race. And, you know, you can see it on our, on our website, again, that's circle.tufts.edu, that not only did young people make up 17% of voters in Arizona, but they preferred Biden over Trump by about 28 points. And that's a huge margin. And, you know, young people talk about turnout a lot in the strength of like what turnout means political power. But when you vote for candidates with that margin, regardless of which party you're voting for, um, that is also power. Um, and so that's a little bit about what we've seen so far in the state of Arizona, but lots more to come on that in particular. Got it. Great. Um, well, I know you have a lot of uh, data to crunch and get back to. So um, really want to thank you so much for taking the time and all your support. And thank you all for tuning in. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.